hello friends how are you how is everything i hope that you're doing well may i take this opportunity to welcome you again in my youtube youtube channel thank you so much for your subscription if you have not subscribed to the channel please hit the button and subscribe this will enable you to get the messages wherever i upload them and then you will be of great importance uh, to this channel and uh, we shall grow together in the Lord. Yeah, I will keep on making good messages which will encourage us to keep our track and to continue believing and also to draw others who have not shared in the love of Christ and to this amazing grace of the Lord which has given to us all of us. So on this part of the world, uh, we have a really long weekend in that it is Labor Day here in China. And uh, we thank God for that because uh, it's a good time where we can rest. It's a good time where we can interact with our friends online. So from wherever you are, feel so much appreciated. So tonight I have a very important message for me and for everyone who is listening uh may i just welcome you to follow me up to the end today we are going to restrict ourselves in the book of hebrews and my topic tonight is holding on unto jesus holding on unto jesus uh, and the reason why i chose to speak about this topic is because that in life not only on issues of faith Holding on seems to be the only thing that brings uh, fruits. Like if you start a business and then you cannot be consistent, you cannot hold on despite the challenges which are eating your business, then you are assured that you cannot reap any fruits. Anything, even in academics, if you give up, then you will not get the reward. So holding on is a discipline and I want us to look it for the sake of faith. And then to our introduction, I will first of all give a background of the book of Hebrews. Yeah, the book of Hebrews is in the New Testament. And this book, the author is anonymous in that uh, it is not clearly known who wrote this book. This book uh, is sent uh, maybe to have been written by Paul or either Brother Barnabas, but they just not been very clear about uh, that issue. But what we know is that the receivers of the book of Hebrews were Christians. And this book, uh, in chapter 1, uh, you'll get to understand that the aim of this book, it was to encourage the Hebrew people to value jesus or to esteem jesus as above any other figure which was in the previous tabernacle that is from the patriarchal era of abraham then to the levitical era of moses you find that uh, moses was the center of worship and in, as much as that tabernacle was standing it is clear that uh, the Hebrew people were to continue uh, worshipping the Lord. And the angels used to deliver the messages of God unto people. But in the New Testament, when Christ uh, is born, and then he preached the gospel here, and he goes to the cross, and, and now he presides over the New Testament, you find that the Jewish people were in Judaism, that they were on that Abrahamic religion. And some of them uh, overstand there. They felt, uh, they felt uh, to understand that Jesus was bringing uh, another testament or another covenant, which now was to be presented over by the blood which had not seen. And this is the blood of the Lord. Now the book of Hebrews was written to encourage Christians, the first believers in Hebrews, who were in the state of giving up, who wanted to go back to, to Judaism. Uh, 
when you read chapter 1 uh, the author of hebrews uh, elevates jesus above the angels he says that the angels were messengers and they spoke the word of god and the word of god in chapter 2 which the angels spoke it was binding and the punishment from god uh, was invoked when these words were not hidden to and then he says christ is above the angels this to tell the hebrew people that christ has become the center it was like drawing them back to christ and encouraging him to look at him in chapter 3 you you find that uh, this book speaks about jesus and it compares him to moses it says that uh, moses was a faithful servant and he served the torah or rather the law was given to israelites through moses and the hebrew people rather jews they revered moses and they took him with high reference but now the writer speaks about moses who was uh, serving in the house like a servant but now christ is above moses moses was very great and he was faithful but christ was faithful as a son so this book uh, it identifies with the situation of the hebrew people because they wanted uh, to give up so i'm going to concentrate more on chapter three uh, I will, you will allow me to read uh, chapter 3 from verse 1 to maybe uh, verse 6. Then I will jump to verse 16 and verse 19. Then it's, the topic is Jesus greater than Moses. And then I read, Therefore, only brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge, as our apostle and high priest, he was uh, faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses uh, was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone but god is the builder of everything moses was faithful as a servant in all god's house bearing witness to what would be spoken by god in the future but christ is faithful as the son of a god's house and we are his house if indeed we ought firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory and from there, I will go to verse uh, 19, verse 16, that is to 19. Then it says with a question, Who were they who had and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses lent out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never end his rest, if not those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to end because of their unbelief. Yeah, this is the scripture, the text, our text tonight, which I want us to address ourselves uh, in it. As you have heard, it starts by uh, making an open call that therefore only brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling fix your thoughts on Jesus whom we acknowledge as an apostle and a high priest when the Hebrew people read uh, this verse it was uh, consequential uh, to them in that in the first tabernacle when they recognize Jesus as an apostle uh, this one is okay because the Jewish people or the rather Hebrew people, they had known the apostles. But now when they call Jesus the high priest, uh, in the first tabernacle, the high priest played a very significant role in the tabernacle. The high priest uh, 
it records in chapter 9 and 10 that the high priest used to go to the place of holy of holies carrying the blood of the goat uh, to atone for the sins of the people and the high priest was only one and he could serve at a particular time it was only the high priest who was allowed to go to the inner place to, was called the holy of holies to do the sacrifices so when the hebrew writer talks about refers jesus being the high priest this one uh, is like a very new thing to the jewish people it was something which was respected to be called an high priest it meant a lot in hebrew people or rather in jewish uh, religion so he deliberately chooses to refer to jesus as the high priest to show that now jesus is far much above than Moses, than any other priest who would serve. Then he continues to say, eh, Jesus was faithful, just like Moses. But now he says, Jesus has been found of uh, great honor. Now that uh, Jesus, at the time the, the right of the Hebrews writing to these people, eh, what was happening to them, there was a lot of persecutions because of Christ. And now the Hebrew people and an alternative, they would opt to go back to Judaism because they were being persecuted and they were going through a lot of challenges of faith. They were sharing in the suffering of Christ. But now at the time the writer is writing to them, they were feeling like they want to give up unto Jesus and go back to Judaism and go back to the old ways, which looked like better. But when you compare the two things, you find that the way of Christ, which is advocated for by the writer, it is far much better. But they wanted to have these alternatives to give up on their way of life. Maybe you can identify with the Hebrew people in your work of Christ. I know that you have believed in Christ and like the Hebrew people and you have professed your faith. If you have not professed your faith, I urge you and I judge you by the mercies of the Lord that if you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. You need to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal savior. But for those who have accepted, now you can identify with Hebrew people. How is your work in Christ? And does it reach a place where you feel like there are better opportunities? Like, does it reach a place in life where you are making decisions? And then you think like, what if I was not a Christian? Maybe I could be living a better life and have better options than I have today. I want to tell you that this is not something very new to you. It was so by the Hebrew people. They had an alternative of going back to their ancient days. But our message tonight is that hold on Christ, hold on Jesus, and believe in him to the end because he has already uh, fought uh, the battle. So he continued to say that... Uh, Moses was faithful as a servant in God's house, bearing witness to what would, what, what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son of God's house, and we are his household, if indeed we ought firmly to our confidence and our hope uh, in which we in glory. The writer of Hebrew tells them that indeed, if you have professed Jesus as your Lord, now you have become a dwelling place with him. The Lord dwells in you. And now you share uh, in his glory that if you persist to the end, we are declared uh, to be faithful when we finish faithfully. It is a call to hold on to Jesus. And he's telling them that they need to hold firmly 
to our confidence and hope because Christ has shared his glory unto us. You read in the book of uh, John chapter 17, you find Jesus praying. And then you realize that uh, Jesus uh, has shared his glory with us. When he prays for the disciples, he prays to his father and he tells him, Father, let them be in unity. And because I have taught them everything which you have taught me, it means that having believed in Jesus, we have shared with God in his glory. And now it was a call for them to continue trusting unto the Lord. Then verse 12 uh, to 19, verse six, uh, 16 to 19 that is, it talks about the sin of unbelief. From the part which I skipped, uh, the writer talks about uh, the sin for the art of unbelieving. It could be it reaches a time where you doubt uh, your faith. And uh, you may, because of the challenges which you are, of course, going through, because when you look around, there are many reasons uh, why someone's uh, faith uh, would tremble. When you check, for instance, like economic transformation, when you, the future prospect uh, does not uh, speak confidence like it used to do, the political leaders also are not able to command the confidence which they used to do in the past. And even to the shame of like of faith, even the spiritual uh, leaders, they have lacked that connection to inspire confidence and to people. So it's possible that you may fall uh, to this scene of unbelief. And then he questions uh, uh, his readers that, they should be careful so that they may not be hardened by the deceive, deception of sin. It is deceitful nature of sin. He is questioning them. And then from verse 16, he is asking a question. Who are they who hard and rebelled? That is if you have read uh, the Exodus, uh, the journey from Egypt to the promised land, uh, the, the Korah, the story of Korah, some men who opposed Moses and they rebelled. But what happened to them? And then another question. What and with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies, bodies perished uh, in the wilderness? And then he continues. And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? <laughs> then he finished by saying, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Jesus, uh, having finished the work of reconciliation, when you read the Gospels, you find that he has given them a mandate. And in, in one of the messages in my, in my YouTube channel, I talked about the mandate which Christ has given the church or rather the believers. What they should do, you can listen to that message in details to get the mandate. But are we playing the mandate as the church? Are you also playing that mandate as a Christian? Are you carrying out the plan of God here on earth? Are you uh, doing something for the sake of the kingdom? Now Christ has died for us. It does not mean that now we are saved uh, automatically. Or rather we have nothing to do and we are saved. Because when you read uh, what the Bible is saying here, is it not the Lord who delivered the, 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 the Israelites from Egypt? Yes, he's the one who delivered them. But what happened when they disobeyed? And to whom did the Lord swear that they will never enter his rest, if not the sons of disobedience? Maybe you are living in disobedience. Disobedience. Uh, to the gospel disobedience to the lordship of the lord jesus christ that is the disobedience and if the lord uh, saw that the disobedient people will not enter the promised land and surely they never enter the promised land what about uh, those who will doubt 
for those who will fail to believe the one whom the Lord has sent. In chapter 2 verse 1 it says, We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have earned, so that we do not drift away. For since message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received it its just punishment. Brothers and sisters, the ones spoken by angels who are minor as compared to Jesus, the ones of God spoken through patriarchs, the ones of Jesus of God uh, spoken by errands of God, they were very binding. What about the word of Christ? The word which has been spoken by the mouth of God himself, who is already glorified in the heavenly throne. It's a wake-up call for all of us to revere and to believe at the name of the Lord, so that at his appearance we shall be like him. The wound history will soon come to an end. We have come from somewhere. When you look around everything, when you look around the creation, you will believe that there is one who has created everything and he has put us here on earth on a great mission. We are not just here for less than 70 years or more and then we are gone and we are forgotten. There is, there is life after this life. There is one who has got to prepare a place for us. His name is Jesus and he has bought us by his own blood so that we may believe in him and that we, be, we, may, we may make be in peace with the Lord, that we may, we may be reconciled with the Lord. That's the one who I'm speaking unto you tonight. I will not continue beyond there, but my finishing point is that let us hold unto Jesus. Let us hold unto Jesus, despite uh, what we go through, despite uh, the magnitude of temptations which come your way. Hold on unto Jesus and fix your hope unto him. He is above anything else we can think about. And he has been exalted in the most holy place where he is there. And he has sent the help of the Holy Spirit who is in us and who guides us and who gives us revelation and gives, gives us a power and ability to evangelize. Have you received him? You need to pray the Lord that he will fill you with the spirit, with the spirit of truth. So that you will be able to, to be to walk faithfully under his guidance. Yeah, so just to remind you, in case you have not uh, subscribed to the channel, please do and may the Lord bless you and do you good. Let us on unto the Lord till he comes. The Bible talks about occupy a labor. Occupy a labor. Let us be at working in everything we everything which we do in our job place, in our areas of research, in our schools, let us be uh, hard working. And I command you to be the hand and not the tail. That is the call which we have received from him. So the Lord bless you and you are good. Yeah, thank you.